Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Modded Endless Legends. So we are a little bit hemmed in, but hopefully all that's about to change. I look at this and it makes me sad. That said, for turn 60, four cities is not really that bad. Uh, so we have a couple of things to do, just a little bit of cleanup here before we move on. Uh, first of all, hey, check out all these pearls. <clears throat> Let's get some free, oh wow. Let's get a lot of free pearls. Uh, Blue might declare war on us at any moment. We have to hope that he's too distracted by his war with red uh, for that to happen quickly. Although, I think these both were red. So uh, we also have to hope that he's not devoting too much attention to his war with red. Because if he wins it, we probably are going to lose the game. It puts us in an awkward position as far as figuring out what to do next. Okay, as things stand, the central market will push this city exactly up to fervency. We need to start getting central markets up in all of our cities. Because if I could get the Empire back to Fervent, I think that would help us a lot. The uh, the wine would really help with that. And of course, what would really help with the wine is us not getting pillaged. Actually, we have so much influence here. This is exactly all of our influence. This would allow us to make a ton of money, get back to Fervency right now, and dramatically reduce our building costs. It doesn't help me get units out any faster, but it does mean that I have more time to devote to making units because my buildings are getting done faster and I can buy units as well. I think this is the play. Alright, so that should help us a lot with the uh, moving up to Fervency and us getting the extra dust from citizens. Should allow us to refocus these back cities onto dust again and move us toward... Uh, hero purchasing pretty quickly. Now, unfortunately, if this is an army... I mean, sorry. If this, if this is a good army, that puts us in a little bit of an awkward position. I guess those guys are in ships right now, though. I'm going to move these guys up far enough to play uh, reinforcement. And we're going to charge these dudes at the beginning of the turn. Because those guys can't reinforce from the water. And in fact, it's a very small army. And this thing in the water is just a settler anyway. And there's a settler in here. Hmm. Strange. So they'll retreat. I did not include this army as reinforcements. So if they come toward the city a little bit more, but like we still have an action point. If they come toward the city <coughs> enough... Oh no! This, this would allow me to put the city garrison into the battle. They are, in fact, close enough. Oh, now they... Now they realize something has gone awry. All right, yeah, with three with three settle or with three militia, I think we can we can do this. Here come more masterminds. Okay, you have four move, five move now. He's got improved movement on. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I think I can put my guys here and here and not get a hit by him on the first turn. Two, three, four, five. Oh, you have to be here. One, two, th one, two, three, four, five. Oh, he can. There's nothing I can do to stop him from hitting the warg, I guess. That's fine. <clears throat> oh, he went after the militia instead. Which is a play of dubious value. Oh, our warg had the wrong target. Well, that's annoying, because now he's going to get to hit the archer. Or he's gonna. I thought. I thought. I thought for sure he must have been pathing by the militia guy on the way to the archer. I cannot understand a universe where he was intentionally attacking that militia. But okay, very little damage dealt there. So here's a settler and a mastermind. <clears throat> Maybe he ran out of army. It seems strange. The with the AI's resource bonuses, it can effectively produce troops for as long as it wants. I guess we should just run all the way forward. Let's just merge up. Uh, and then the question is, do I want to push the central market really hard, or do I want to fall back onto dust? Now, let's push the central market really hard, and then fall the city back onto dust. Okay, Oirenth is getting close. So we need to get to 8 population. And then we build a district here, and not only is the city permanently fervent because of the Museum of Oregon giving us 40 approval, but 
we will move our faction quest forward finally. All right, I don't think I want to run too deep into their territory with this army. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to abandon my reinforcement uh, army. Oh, somehow I skated right past. Okay, this being a three fortress region makes a lot more sense, given the size of it. Okay, now we can see all the facilities. Purple is certainly getting a lot of resources. I still had a couple of turns on the next reinforcement troop being built. Maybe I should have attacked these neutrals that are wandering around with our guy just to, you know, fight them with the garrisons and get them over with. Because they are making me a little nervous. Let's, uh, <clears throat> let's get aggressive here. Now, pink can attack us in green's territory. That's an important thing to note. For some reason, he has attacked. Oh, he has attacked because his city garrison is nearby. So he has some Berdeki in addition to his Ice Wargs. This Ice Warg has 108 damage. I'm assuming this guy has damage boost or something. No. This is an Ice Warg too. Why does it have so much damage? I mean, it's level 4, but still. But, uh, again, we can see, what, 8 units here? No, this is, this is 5 plus 4, so this is 11 units. And in 11 units, he has 4 settlers. I have no idea what's going on with that. But I guess we're fighting all of them. I mean, if he loses this fight, we're going to be able to take this cat. We're going to be able to take this city. Also, notice that the city has a damaged uh, fortification value. It's regaining fortification from having been sieged recently. So that's pretty interesting. Hold up, who's blue at war with? Or who's who's green at war with? Purple. Did purple have troops over here? Huh. Weird. Anyway, let's do this. This is a uh, this is gonna be a big fight. A lot a lot hangs on the way this fight goes. All right. So I think I want to start my archers pretty far forward. If he comes in via these things and can move four or five spaces, he'll go one, two, three, four, or four. Um, so I don't want to start my guys too far over to the left. But I also don't want us to start all the way back here, you know? Because I want us to be able to get into battle. Let's swap the injured people. Okay, what's the situation? Nope, he did it again. So this is a, a classic AI special. Uh, he attacks with an army. He makes an attack that only makes sense if he's willing to use a nearby army as reinforcements, but then calculates that doing so would make the uh, nearby army lose, and so he elects not to include them as reinforcements. Uh, you have two movement, which will make you go to here, because there's a ton of cliff. And, alright, so I'm going to have this guy stay put. I don't want him to run forward, because he'll be in range if he does. And we just let them have their turn. And then we move our archers forward. I had to play conservatively because of the possibility that he would include his um, include his reinforcements, but I'm not. I have to say I'm not surprised that he didn't. I'm gonna have a hero die to a settler just because that's a thing I've never seen before. <clears throat> Oh, you got him! Unbelievable! Wait, why is everybody not moving? What about... One, two, three, four... You can actually shoot at him from the position you're standing in right now! What is going on here? And we know that that's true because they shot at him last turn. Why did they not... I understand them thinking, oh, I can't path to that guy, so let's not move. But I don't understand a unit that's in range already not just choosing not to fire. That's very odd. Uh, does everybody have real orders? So can you... Whatever. Let's try to get as many people as far forward as possible here. Something, something strange is occurring. Okay, there we go. We managed to win the battle. And we got to see a settler drop a hero. That's pretty cool. I've played a lot of Endless Legend in my life. Um, I've seen almost everything. 
but that one was new on me. All right, well, the sharing is not giving us a lot of information about nearby armies. Maybe green's losing to purple on the ground somewhere? It almost can't be the case, right? What we know about purple... I guess, do we know anything about purple? Yeah, 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 this looks like actual territory to me. Maybe I'm wrong about that, Maybe, but this kind of looks like a coast. So I think purple actually does have territory here, which would mean that there's no way for them to be on in ground contact with green unless they ran a whole army across pink's territory which i guess is not that's not a thing that they couldn't have done there's no no reason really to assume that it couldn't have happened uh okay <clears throat> let's make another ice warg because ice wargs are good reinforcements they run fast and <laughs> can reach the front line quickly yeah and i guess we'll go see just city like we'll uh we'll figure this out hey that's the sea monster we should not be here anymore Let's go this way. All right. Well, three turns until we can start building the burrow that moves our faction quest forward. I guess we will spend those three turns making a another ranger starting work on another ranger yeah seems fine okay actually i want to i do want to start the turn over here though actually maybe i shouldn't move right away maybe i should wait and see if any armies come into view before i commit my movement points yeah here's one Right, what do we got? Settlers. And a siege. Purple siege. That's... Huh. That's very strange. What is this? This is a single Burdecki? With okay stats, but a, a Berdecki's not going to win a fight against a city garrison. Because it's a lone cavalry, and the militia will destroy it. Yeah, I'm not going to worry about him. Okay, so purple is Siege and Green. We're going to have to run him off. I need this territory. Alright, let's see if we can... Uh... I'm glad that we figured out that this was going to happen before I tried to make any kind of peace deal with them. Okay, grass silk, cool. Because the moment we declare peace, we won't be able to attack them anymore. So we don't see their army because it's stealth, probably. This is a strange... It's a strange game so far. Alright, what do we want to pick up next? We're not doing too poorly on industry. You know what? Every game. Every game we have to pick up Imperial Coinage. We know that this is valuable. This seems like an okay time to do it. Alright, yeah. Everything's going... I just keep... I keep looking around. I keep assuming things must be going poorly. So, yeah. Purple is attacking a guy. Somehow. And we're just going to have to move around here until we see them. Here we are. What does he have? He has some assassins. Okay, apparently I'm not going to be allowed to move that army. Uh, the city garrison can't be involved in this fight because they're uh, being sieged right now. So, there's no way out of the city for them. Well, I mean, this should be a pretty straightforward victory. They even set up my troops the way I would like my troops set up. Baffling. Truly, truly bizarre decision making on the AI's part. <laughs> they have divided their, uh. 
Okay. They they did the attack, and purple won. Or, um, green won. If purple had won, that would have been really bad for us, actually. Okay, so let's get back over to here. On the, the plus side, uh, it does appear that a guy lost some units. So purple did some meaningful damage, and now we are here to do more meaningful damage. I saw a single Burdeki up there. It, I guess it went back up into the fogged area. Um, oh, actually, you know what? We don't have the sharing up here. Because the sharing only works in my regions and regions that are adjacent to my regions, which does not describe this place. As soon as we take a guy, we'll have the sharing up there. Oh, hey, I forgot all about that. Okay, so now let's see if Purple wants to deal. Worried. We just lost a bunch of troops, so it's probably, uh, probably that's part of it. They would love it if I would declare war on Red. They don't care about me declaring war on anybody else. That's interesting, considering that, um, they're neighbors with Pink. I would expect them to love the idea of me killing Pink. Uh, so we can get easy peace once we have Imperial Coinage. They'll, uh, they'll go for that. It feels strange. I don't think I want to go for this. I think that we might be able to beat them, but it really depends on which units are left over in the garrison, uh, how many of these four are settlers, and 262 is a lot of HP to get through. A lot of fortification HP. Alright, let's do a little bit more ruin searching. Find a treasure over there, get 25 wine. Well, okay, it revealed to me another ruin, and 25 wine will be useful. We don't need it right this second, but it'll be good for uh, potentially weaning us off of the plus 25 approval bonus. So let's build this, let's send the warg up to join in as quickly as possible, I think. Do I want to switch? I think I do. I think I'm going to switch um, two of these rangers out for these two wargs. So we'll just move troops back and forth between the armies a little bit. Alright, one more turn until the birth, and we can uh, at least begin the construction of the burrow. That was weird. Anybody else see that text jitter? Alright, it just says a new district, so yeah, the... This should do it. So move this up here, pull everybody over to there. Four turns. Okay. That's not too bad. He's got a Burdecki. Actually, go to here, because you will slightly affect the uh, fortification damage from there. So I'm going to transfer you... And you, I guess the two lowest level ones make sense. I'm gonna move you guys into the main army. It makes a little, it just makes a little bit more sense to use, um, to use the cavalry in our vanguard and have the archers come in afterward. Okay, now is the time for alchemy workshops. I'm feeling a little bit more confident. Uh, actually, maybe I'll end up making both of these armies two wargs for archers, just so that we have reasonable defenses no matter which direction we're attacked from. And I'm assuming I won't be able to buy a hero this turn. Yeah. 549, so next turn I'll be able to afford some of them. We'll see what we want. Unfortunately, it looks like um, I'm not going to be able to claim much ocean territory. Although green has recapped... Jurgador. I hate that this is so far away from me. So the moment green dies, all of this stuff will become empty, and we want to immediately cap as much of it as we can. But we have to be careful about the positions of our ships in the run-up to green's death. Because, uh, obviously, <laughs> uh, the AI having basically infinite resources for troops means, means that uh, we should expect the garrisons of all of the fortresses to be completely full. And if we get our ships anywhere near them, within a single ship move of them, uh, before green dies, uh, we will be obliterated. 
Okay, Shirelle probably needs to start expanding. In particular, we need to get some coastline. Alright. That'll help a little bit with the ocean stuff. Having two cities that can pump things out. Also, Irenth is just a, like, it's a pretty good city now. It's pretty powerful. So it should be able to produce ships relatively quickly. Do I want to... When do I want to go here? I probably want to go when they're... Oh, what happened? Oh, it was lightning. There was lightning on the road. That's fine. I was like, if, if Green built a ward of Origa or something, then we have to actually, like, be a little more aggressive. Let's finish massing up, I guess, and then we'll, uh, we'll evaluate. So I don't really want to sit here for five turns, is what I'm thinking. He's making units every turn as well. Whoa, 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 why did that break the siege? You sense war fatigue among you? Is that something you have to sense? Shouldn't you just, like, know? Alright, we don't know how many... Uh, let's finish burrowing out here. We don't know how many of the units in the garrison here are settlers because we don't know how many settlers were killed in Purple's attack. It could be that this is seven real units. Sorry, it can't be. We saw one settler. It could be that this is six real units. Uh, do I want to fight six real units with, and possibly a hero, with that much fortification? I think the answer is still no. Ooh. If we attack him, he's going to be a little bit less receptive to peace. But also, if we can attack him and then get peace, we'll be able to hold on to this. No, we won't. I'm black spotted. Okay, the black spot has to end. It's screwing up all of my logic. Uh, Shirelle can probably just keep building out. And actually, I'm going to pull these guys over to dust. Let's make a whole hell of a lot of money, shall we? So we have access to a couple of guys. If I'm looking for a second... General. Maybe I shouldn't be. Yeah, you know what? Let's... Who's who's a governor here? Dust efficiency 3, food boost 1. Um, he would immediately be useful in the coastal city, whose name I've already forgotten that we have running. Um, I'm gonna do that. Yeah. Screw this. The armies are doing well enough. Bam. Look at that. 10 dust per turn. Okay. And I think, unfortunately... What makes the most sense is to wait until this comes down. Until their fortifications are, like, completely down, probably. Alright, and we're about to have Imperial Coinage. So this is the turn that I would be making that peace deal. And he is producing fire ships. Never mind, we're just gonna... Go, go! Because I couldn't have attacked the, um, the fortress without pulling his fire ship in. Ooh, I might be able to now. He's moved kind of far away. And the thing is, if I take this, and then we get peace, and he and green keep fighting over these, I can try to snipe them whenever they're green but empty. And I might be able to get this whole ocean region. It's a, it's a low percentage play. Red's dead. So blue is massively powerful. I died. Uh, what happened? Uh, man. 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 I don't even know what happened. How could this have occurred? Let's just refocus here. Uh, so we're about to reveal the next set of resources. Public granary is a good tech. These things are both good. Shipyard is maybe good, although it doesn't look like we have any islands. So shipyard is maybe not the play. Oh, you know what I should get? I should definitely have topography. So 
So here, I know I said uh, I said some things. I did some things. We're gonna have some trust issues, I understand. But what if we were like best bros forever? What would you think of that? <clears throat> his uh, his resources leave a little bit to be desired. <laughs> I'm not really excited about either of these, any of these. It takes me 25 to run a booster. So he doesn't have enough Titan Bones to boost me. He doesn't have enough Moon Leaf to boost me. He can take some, take some of his pearls, but that would mostly be for spite. He won't give me attack. Uh, I don't know. I guess we can get his Titanium. And then just, like, give him the deal as it stands and let him... Let him get that modifier for a deal in his favor. Because this is 108 influence. We probably can't afford to pay too much more than this and still make our plans. Sure. Bros for life, huh? Super weird. Okay, let's, uh... Yeah, keep developing our empire. Purple's involvement in the war against green does put a little wrinkle in it that um, makes me think maybe I should move a little faster just so that Purple doesn't take this city. But I have to hope that Purple will fight Blue. Yeah, I'm a little concerned. So they're going to attack us next turn. I think I'm just going to let that happen. Yeah, that seems fine. We'll fight them without fortifications. They might be bringing in backup troops. In fact, they are trying to get in range now. For Decky 4, a couple of settlers, a couple of ice wargs. Ooh, this one has... Huh. Why is your damage so weird? Because we know the ice wargs too. The ice warg 2s. We've been fighting ice warg 2s forever. But I don't think they had improved damage before. I'm going to start the attack. Before the reinforcement army gets in range. Okay, and we did that. Giving us 160 dust, which probably uh, gets us an easy hero. It looks to me like we got real bad luck on the strategic resources. Yep, Palladian, and that's it. And a single source of blood crystals. Fantastic. <clears throat> well, I'm not happy. Uh, this is one of those one of those control click times. All right, this should be pretty easy, I would think. Iraku's stats are not very good. He's high level, but he doesn't have any gear on. It looks like, and we are still, in fact, looking at three settlers in the city garrison, two militia, um, one of them at half health. Berdecki four have 83 damage and very high attack, and 12 speed. Check that out. Naturally speedy cavalry plus improved movement three, right? All right, let's figure this out. So, uh, we attack the city garrison and it, hmm, okay. Yeah, I, I clicked on the city, right? I hit I hit attack and it had the I had the option of sieging, so I know I was targeting the city. I don't know why it would start with one of the little armies standing on the city tile. Oh, they have a stun and it landed. That really sucks. I mean it's not so bad, I guess, but Oh, this is not a good time for you guys to divide your fight. Please focus. Oh, you are kidding me. You killed none of them because you divided your fire. Uh, I happen to go through and manually target everybody on the same enemies. Yep, and now we're gonna we're gonna suffer two attacks that we should not suffer from this guy and the guy who just died. Because our units did not focus on them. Well, okay, we got we got a little bit lucky there and none of them stunned. 
Man, we're having a lot of trouble actually finishing these guys off. So this guy's gonna get another attack before he dies. And also, man. Well, the stun is kind of irrelevant there because the, the uh, archer died. Okay, well, I think that's largely the end of the battle. I guess we're actually probably going to lose a warg or two to their militia because militia. You guys seriously don't even have to bother with that. Okay, so my suspicion is, though, that we are going to encounter the bug here and we are not going to get control of the city. It caused the attack seems to have targeted an army that was near the city and not the city itself. So I don't think we're going to uh, get control of the city from this attack. Which means that this army is going to have time to move into range and play defense on our attempt to get the city next turn. So that is a bummer. Okay, and now he's got settlers playing defense. Yeah, I'm not really sure what happened to Green here. This has been a, a very unusual sequence of events. Purple attacking Green all the way across Pink's Empire is really weird. Okay, no, it did give us the... It did give us the city, but it's, it was a weird sequence of events. Anyway, what do we have? What are we missing here? So let's transfer a warg and two rangers into this army. You guys come over here and just stand in this game. Actually, you know what? Let's swap the injured warg out to the most injured one. You guys walk into the city proper. You get to search a ruin. That's an exciting turn. We didn't find, didn't find anything. Okay, and we have not picked up a source of any new strategics, but we do have Moonleaf now. And they didn't have Empire Mint or Seed Storage, or how old is this city? The city's been here for quite a while. Very strange. Very strange indeed. Oh, did this city have... It doesn't look like it had any really specialized buildings. It does have a Chapel of Origa. Plus one um, population per pacified village. And it has three pacified villages, so we're getting a ton of population from the chapel. Okay. On the whole, very positive sequence of events there. And this guy's just a settler, right? Yeah, I'm not too worried about him. I guess, technically, it is the case that he could reclaim the city if we walk away from it. I'm going to get Smelting Station and Hope. Oh, actually, you know what we should do is we should definitely put up a Wine Extractor right away. That's even more important than the Mint. Um, I think what we're going to do here is attack this guy with the Secondary Army, because we don't want we don't want to walk away from the city while he still has a unit here, until it has enough fortification, or until we have enough ownership for it to generate Militia. All right, once the, uh, once the tide breaks, sort of, uh, oh, I forgot to buy a hero. Once the tide breaks and you're able to make some real forward progress, it often uh, continues to snowball in that direction. So I'm hopeful here. What's up? Yeah, Green wants to quit the war and... Huh. And Pink is telling us that they're great. I was kind of hoping that we were going to get some uh, congratulation from one of Green's enemies. All right, let's do it. You just remember, you wanted this. That army has two settlers in it. What is he doing? The populations of his cities must be so screwed up. Okay. Uh, let's put you here, the hero here. Make it so they can't uh, attack any of our archers with this guy. Two, three, four, five. Yeah, the cliff face. Okay. Now, these Ice Wargs are a little bit more upgraded. Ice Warg 4s with very high damage. So, in fact, 
I would like everybody to shoot at this guy if they can reach him. Two, three, four. Uh, actually, this guy is also a concern. His move is one, two, three. Oh, he's going to hit archers down here. Actually, okay. All of you guys maybe should refocus. Let's try to kill that guy. Oh. See, so sometimes stunning someone prevents them from counterattacking on that attack. And sometimes it doesn't. There doesn't seem to be a lot of rhyme or reason to when it doesn't when it doesn't. It's very strange. Okay. These guys... This guy is going to do some, some real hurt. It is going to hurt very much. We're about to lose a real unit to a settler. Must you, must you focus on the settler first? Does that feel like it's the most important thing right now? Okay. He attacked a warg, that's good for us, and uh, we should have no problem finishing this off this turn. Alright, I have no idea why green would make that attack. There's no way that they thought it was a good idea. This is really bizarre. trying really hard to target these guys past the city nameplate. He will just retreat. And then we will grab our actual army, who still has their action point, and finish him off. And yeah, I agree. It would have been cool to uh, heal our hero this turn. Maybe we should have done that. I don't know. I think that actually removing his armies from the field is a good idea, though. Okay, here comes another purple army. So we're gonna have to want to. We're gonna have to move fast here, because we need to get this city under siege before purple gets here. And we see. I'm assuming all of these are lone. Yeah, one, two, three, four armies that are just a settler. Kind of unbelievable. All right, what else do we got going on? Well, we can finish triangling this city, and we may as well. We have to search those ruins right there. So this might be a good time to hire a second general and just spawn him on one of the cities. Oh no, we have a spare unit in Oirenth, actually. Okay, we have discovered some Palladian. And he's in Golquin. Where in Golquin is he? Right here? No, seriously, where in Golquin is he? He's in a he's in a ruin, right? Well, there aren't a lot of ruins in Golquin. Oh, it's down here. Okay. Well, this uh, this archer can handle this. So let's hire who's available. Let's, what do we got? There's a Soyala Tocho available. Industry boost two is valuable in small cities. Uh, this is a leveled up archivist. Not worth the money. Dust efficiency one. Science boost three. I don't love the faction tree of the uh, of the vaulters though. Industry efficiency two with that uh, with that wonderful uh, the wonderful high industry tree. Yeah, let's get Ipsawacha. I'm going to put him in... No, we already put some of the insurance. Let's put him in Golquin. The fact is, Golquin is on the front of a neighbor who is known to be bloodthirsty and who is, at this point, very powerful and dangerous. So, Golquin could definitely use the ability to suddenly build a defensive force. Alright, we gotta get this siege going really fast before Purple puts it up, because if Purple puts up the siege, there's no way we get the city. Oh, he saved movement until the end of my turn. Come on, go, go, go. Okay, we got him, we got him. And purple cannot attack us because we are at peace with him. What's up? 
my great military power. What a strange thing to say. Yeah, this is our military power right here. First of all, not only is our military power not great, it is less than a quarter of his own. He's just straight up lying to us. Really, they didn't attack the small army, they attacked our, our large army. That's very strange. There's a lot of really weird stuff happening here. Okay, well, let's do it. Let's rumble. Uh, where's my other... Oh, they're here, they are. I think we can use the sieged city and the fact that it's not actually pathable uh, as a defense here. Oh, no, there's a cliff there. We probably actually want this guy to be here, then. Alright, we're gonna take a lot of damage. Fortunately, they are obsessed with fighting our hero. Damn it. He eats an attack every, uh, every battle, and also a stun, which I guess is, you know, it's good that it's him and not anybody else, but I'm a little annoyed with how often the stun is him. Yeah, I cannot fathom what caused him to attack my healthy army instead of my weak army. Alright, we have the... I'm just gonna heal our hero. I don't think we want to attack this turn. That you... this garrison could be, like, scary. So we're gonna heal our hero up for the first time in a long, long time. I mean, that's the first heal we've ever put on him, but he's going to have actual, a reasonable amount of health for the first time in a long, long time. Do I want to still try to build the Megapole? If I was going to build it, Golquin would be a good place to do that, because Golquin really does not have the industry capacity that the other cities have. This would be a big step toward fixing that. And even with Golquin's relatively poor land, um, it's only nine turns. This would get us three more forest spaces. Nobody else has built it. I'm gonna go for it. Maybe that's silly. Maybe I should just be building units. But I'm gonna go for it. And I think Oirenth needs to start producing ships. Yeah, we can throw one of these on there while we're at it. Uh, does it make sense to upgrade the ship design? Always. Always the wrong button. I always do it. The iconography really could not be clearer. Oh, yeah, yeah, these ships are... these are early, early ships. These ships did not have upgrades. Uh, I don't think it makes much sense to try to spend titanium on ship parts. Alright, so how long are we looking at here? It is 265 to make one of these, so it's more than two turns worth of industry. That's a shame. 721 to buy them out, so we won't be doing that very much. Alright, so we see two purple armies, one of them moving in a way that kind of looks like it's threatening me, but we're at peace. I would expect to have a little bit more warning than that if he's going to turn on us. The AI sometimes drops you from peace to war. Oh! Us being at peace doesn't matter, I'm black spotted. Why can I not keep that information in my head? Well, crud. Okay, now one thing that's important to note about these guys is they have the acrobat ability, which lets them move through our units. So, if, say, I move this guy to here to try to form a more perfect wall, it will allow their assassins to bounce right through our guys into this space. So I do like the way the AI set these dudes up. Alright, their hero is... not our first target. Everybody hates... the AI hates heroes. But honestly, removing a hero from battle uh, is almost never the thing you should be focusing on. Unless the hero is legitimately their most dangerous unit, focus on removing their most dangerous unit. You know? Wow. Okay, good shooting. 
these guys actually have pretty bad stats compared to Green's troops. I was kind of wondering how Purple failed the siege of that city, but I totally get it now. And unfortunately, the thing that I did have my range units targeted on died, so a bunch of them are going to go after the hero, despite the fact that removing the hero from battle changes essentially nothing, because the hero's stats are so bad. Alright, yeah, so you go after him. Okay. We may not even get attacked again, but if we do, it will be for very little damage. Alright. Again, this is... I can't imagine how Purple thought that was a good idea. The black spot ends, by the way, if we kill green. So their settlement has an Ice Work 4, which is a dangerous opponent, and a couple of Berdeki and mostly uh, crummy units. Mastermind 5 has okay damage. He has six settlers in this area. Just so we're all clear on that. Uh, he has now attacked me with a settler. So let's just move all the range units up to the front here. Any one of them should be able to finish this off. There's no reason to do something with a melee unit that would cause us to lose even a single point of health. Oh no, he actually did bring in... Oh wow. Can I tell you, I'm shocked that he actually did bring in his garrison. I assumed that he wouldn't based on, you know hundreds of hours of the AI behaving in a certain way. Well, he... he got me. Boy, oh boy, am I surprised. This is, like, such a dumb way to do this, though. Like, a shockingly dumb way to do this. Well, we're going to take some damage, that's for sure. Oh, now you remember tur orders across multiple turns. <laughs> that has never been a thing that the AI has done. Okay, so these two militia are the last of his actual troops, I think. And then from here on, it's just settlers, which probably will not even be um, in the battle. I'm assuming. Okay, we can play. Uh, we can play keep away with these guys a little bit because we have pretty good range. And he has, in fact, included all of his settlers in the battle as reinforcements. I cannot. I just. Man, I don't understand any of the things that are happening in this battle. Yeah. Hold on, you had explicit orders to go here and attack that guy, didn't you? Oh, there's a cliff face. Well, my thinking there was that I wanted to, uh, we would kill this guy with arrows, and then I would lock this guy in place, but I guess there is a cliff. Well, that's... weird. That's a weird sequence of events. Okay, so that's this city. Sure, I'll fight it. I'll fight it manually just to avoid anything truly crazy occurring. Actually, we probably want to uh, be down here, right? So that it's easier to move into the forest. <clears throat> okay, so this will be Green's last city. Unfortunately, due to me not thinking that uh, Green would approach that in the way they did, we lost somewhat uh, somewhat more units than I thought we were going to, but that's fine. We'll, uh, we'll get it under control. We have picked up another strategic resource generator now. And this army can't really do very much, except go get ruins for a couple of turns. 
Okay, I need reinforcements. But you guys have a very important job, I guess. Alright, oh, Zeltana is recruited. He needs to get natural resources, level 2, as before. Uh, I think I'm going to... I can't put him in Golquin. I was going to say, I think I'm going to put him in Golquin because you get a lot of resources for... Or you get a lot of XP for finishing a legendary. But actually, let's put him in Ipidan for, for now. Because Ipidan is the place where combat is most likely to occur. You might be able to get some XP out of this. And, I mean, I should probably, like, give him some gear. Actually, do that. Uh, tier 3 shield. Okay. Yeah, so he can at least get some XP out of uh, me murdering settlers, I guess. Oh, what, a, what a wonderful time for it to be winter. Okay. So I think we have good reason to assume that green has just one region remaining. Because it looks to me like there are no settleable islands. There's no way we're going to get this sea region. But it's not impossible that we could get this one. In order to do it, though, we're going to have to have a ship fairly close to this fortress when green goes down. And I have no idea what the timetable for that looks like anymore. What does it cost to buy one of these? Six sixty. Okay. So we'll buy a ranger in Ipadan or something. Okay. Let's search some ruins. A tome of endless savagery. I have never gotten this from a ruin before. It's interesting. The Guardian Slayer trait is just like Infantry Slayer or anything else in, in that it just causes you to do bonus damage against the type of unit that it targets. Alright, so if this... Um, oh, we should get Reaping Station as well, because we actually have access to a fair number of sites for uh, future resources. Future resources? For current era resources. These are not future resources. I totally missed the hex. I just clicked around it. Huh. Alright. This is honestly still not that bad. So at 660 dust, we'll buy an archer in Ipidan. Let's attack these guys. Just keep generating XP while we're uh, waiting here. Why did Ipidan show us having no action point left? That's definitely not correct. I assumed the first turn it was because he had just been placed in the city or something, but Ipidan should definitely be able to participate in these battles. Okay, so we're going to take our ship here. Uh, fortunately, the sharing is giving us a lot of information about this region. Oh, interesting. There's another little sea region over here that has fortresses in it. This one is less urgent because uh, Purple's a lot less likely to know about it and be ready to take it. We're going to skate this guy along through all of this turbulence and try to get up here in a place where we're not totally visible. Okay, you guys need to grab this bunch of pearls. Okay. Zoom in enough that I'm actually able to declare this battle at the beginning of the turn here. Kill these guys off, and then start moving toward the border. Maybe the city can't participate in combat if it doesn't yet have a garrison? I'm pretty sure that's not correct. But it seems like maybe what is happening. 
Hey, we found 25 Moonleaf. Unfortunately, 25 is no longer our booster cost. But uh, we do have some natural Moonleaf coming. Okay. So this is indeed just one large land region. Now remember, we don't actually want to see any of his ships. Like, that's bad. Because we don't want him to attack us. We want to just slide through here in silence. And he doesn't have the sharing. He has no idea where our units are if he can't actually see them. <clears throat> so you guys are all on dust. I have a lot of really important stuff going, so I don't want to pull a ton of people off of industry, but I do really want to make sure that we have enough money to buy out um, an archer soon. So I guess his plan should be to go to Oirenth, and he can meet up with us by coming up here from the south. Alright, you guys. I'm gonna control these guys at the beginning of the turn. I want to try to take advantage of the fog bank to lose our pursuers. It would be very foolish indeed of him not to chase us. I assume he will chase us. This is just like a free kill, if he can catch up. He can't see us while we're in the fog bank unless he gets adjacent. Oh no, Purple's taking back the stuff. I need... Okay, so he might actually just be going for that. Or he's veering off in the wrong direction entirely for no reason. Okay. Um, we really need these fortresses to not be purple. Oh no, you guys. Everything's, everything's falling apart. The timings aren't working out. Alright, so I don't know where his city is in this region. So actually, maybe I want to buy this guy in Oirenth. Buying it in Ipidan, though, gives me some extra XP for Ahote Zoltana. Which is something that we need. As a high-value commodity. Uh, we are going to definitely be slower this game on the faction quest than we were last game. The uh, land-dominating player is... Necrophage, though, so maybe he'll be a little slow to take advantage of his position. Maybe even slow enough that I can, you know, regroup after killing Green and do some damage to him. That would be cool. And keep in mind, just because we see an army on the, with the sharing doesn't mean that we see something we have to be afraid of. That could be a settler. Hell, it could be six, for all we know. I'm definitely going to heal up. Because his actual health is going to matter here. He's going to be important in the final uh, final sequence. Well, maybe we'll get lucky and there won't be any ships up here because they've come down to fight purple or something and we'll be able to just take this early. We've got to get rid of the black spot though because anything, anything we take early is just going to get taken back by purple and we won't be able to take it back from them because of the goddamn... Ah! This black spot is killing me. But at this point, there's no sense of dealing with green. Let's just kill him and get it over with that way. And this would be a really good time for it not to be winter, honestly. It being winter right now is, uh, is hurting us. Okay, there's the city. That army is indeed a single settler who has now fled into the water. The ocean. the ocean is green once more. Oh, check that out. We have so many pearls. Um, so is this a purple navy, or what's the what's the story here? In fact, green has pushed purple back out of the ocean entirely. Not entirely, here. But this is blue now. Yeah, it, purple's actually having a really hard time on the water. He's getting abused left and right here. Uh, give me Dakari Rangers, please. Actually, don't do not do that. Give me one of these. Alright, I think we're going to be able to do this. I would like to try to wrap this up, this video, you know, for thematic uh, closure. 
So it doesn't make a lot of sense to me to go to Uncommon Alloys. I guess it's important though. Yeah, and we do have some Palladium that we got from a quest. Would it be a good idea to pull a Hoti Zeltana out and have him boss around these guys? Probably. The, the XP from the combat is going to be significant. Let's rush this. Is Green trying to make peace? No, they want to open their borders to me. Uh, hold on. How much influence do I need for a good Empire plan? So we could do like this. I think this is probably what we're looking at. So I don't really want to spend any influence. So counter offering is maybe a little unlikely. The thing is... I don't really want to open... Yeah, screw it. I'm just not gonna... Okay, he has built a Guardian. This is his big play. He's come at us with a Mastermind 6, which I'm sure has reasonable damage because he probably has good gear on. But we get to see his city garrison is just Settlers. So basically, it's us versus this Guardian. We have to kill it. It's going to take a lot of doing, but I think we, we have to fight this. It's really sad that we're one space out from having the city garrison participate in the battle. Uh, so we just go for it. This is going to be a little bit rough. Oh, he's not bringing his reinforcements. Okay. Alright, it's probably the case that we will be able to catch the Guardian in a position that is favorable for us. Unless it's way over here, I guess. That could be the Guardian. Yeah, okay, it's actually inside the city. That's a little bit more awkward. <coughs> well, I guess this is maybe going to be a little bit more involved than I thought, so why don't we call this... Uh, next video material. This one is already a little bit on the long side, so let's try to position ourselves so that we can sweep in and grab green stuff, but not in a place where he can tell that we're here. Uh, and we're definitely going to want to be building reinforcements because it looks like this war is not quite over yet. That said, this city is probably better put to use getting us Moonleaf. I don't have enough dust to buy out anything else, right? So I can't get Zoltana any more building completion XP. The other thing I could do is I could at this point... Oh no, Golquin's gonna... Am I pull everybody off of this? No, it's done. Should I just swap Zoltana over to here? Yeah, probably. The XP for completing a... Uh, let me make sure his... Yeah, he's available. All right. The XP for completing a Legendary is large enough that I think we would be fools not to do this. So uh, I'm going to move... I'm just going to swap their positions. Uh, if Sawacha goes here. And Zoltana goes here. This is probably better than including him as a... Uh, general. Okay, so that's going to be it for this turn. Come back next time. For real, green is done. I, I feel very confident about this. And we're going to maybe get an ocean region out of it, and then we'll have to see if we can slow purple, or uh, slow blue down in conjunction with purple. And maybe this can actually be the one. I remain hopeful. We'll see you then.